help me understand the difference between a passive radiator and a port. So, mm-hmm. I mean, how I see passive radiators that look like speakers, mm-hmm. uh, but I know they're not, and I know that they're like a closed port. Mm-hmm. So, help me, help me, uh, help us understand that. Yeah, yeah. Pass, passive radiators. They they're also branded differently, which I think confuses people. So sometimes they call them ABRs or passive radiators or sub base radiators. What's ABR stand for? Uh, auxiliary base radiator, usually. Oh, uh, that so sounds like marketing horseshit. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> <laughs> very much. Yeah. So they're, and I think part of the appeal to some manufacturers was a marketing one where it looks like a woofer, so you think you're you yeah, think yeah. you're buying an extra woofer and you're not. I, when in the poke speakers, that's I used to think that you know yeah. I looked at that and I wait a minute those those don't have any motors. Yeah, they they, they had lost favor for a while, but they, they do have definite benefits, and and especially now with smaller enclosures yeah. and more bass output being important, you know both of them act as Hemholtz resonators. So it's like you're blowing over a, a bottle and it. And it's tooting, you know, it's it's hooting as 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 it as it resonates. So you have two different systems in a speaker. You have the woofer and box system, and then you have the uh, box and resonator system there. Yeah. And uh, you know, with a port, you you have a, a, something that works great, and it's very inexpensive. I mean, a port tube is is, is pennies, you know, really. Yeah, it could it's be a just piece a card- of PVC. Yeah, yeah just- cardboard tube in some speakers. Does that work like a Helmholtz resonator as well? It, it does, and, and where ports tend to fail in, in that uh, ideal, you know, deviate from the ideal, is where you have frictional losses in a port. So there's air moving back and forth. Right. And But it doesn't behave, you know, in the laminar way mm-hmm. and starts to uh, compress and then also chuff. You know, you, you have a system that... We call it farting, actually. Yeah, yeah. You, and then on top of that... If you're trying to tune low in a smaller box, the port you know, has to scale uh, in length, and also in higher output systems, it has to scale scale in area. And so the area and length that ratio needs to stay the same. So uh, as the area grows, the length grows, and you start getting to a point where it's occupying a lot of the space inside the enclosure, so it makes the box bigger, and it starts to have uh, pipe resonances. So actually, harmonics of the port start happening that are out of phase with the output of the woofer and cause cancellations. So you actually, in a lot of bookshelf speakers, have ports that have major resonances in the 500 to one kilohertz range and actually Mm. cause a lot of mid-range coloration because of the pipe resonances. Mm -hmm. And also in subwoofers, it's a huge problem where the ports are long enough and some subwoofers that are a couple feet long, you, you end up having resonances in the range of the subwoofer. So it's really those kinds of speakers where you're trying to tune low and have um, higher output that that you tend to have the most problems. Yeah. But that's just the way of the world now, where you're having higher output, smaller systems, and higher power amplifiers and things. So, so passive radiators don't have those things. They don't have no chuffing, obviously. No chuffing. As long as you're in the mechanical limits of the passive, it's very linear. Mm-hmm. There's not the compression where you you gradually are having more and more vent compression. You just don't have that with a PR as long as the the system is in its kind of linear uh, mechanical range. And then also, you don't have the the uh, pipe resonances. So, and those those two things are really where ports tend, tend to fall apart. A lot of manufacturers like Polk and others have done things to try to improve ports, but a PR is just a, a better approach in a lot of ways. It's just more expensive because you, you're, you're most of the way to building a woofer. Right. Um, the other problem is that People sometimes build PRs a little bit wrong because a PR, it has its own resonance. So the, there's an extra term in a PR. You have the compliance of the su- suspension of a PR that's not something that's present in the ported system. That's, so, the, that's the surround. Yeah, the surround, the, yeah. The, the spider if you're using a spider. And it causes a fifth order roll off below the tuning as opposed to a fourth order in a, in a ported system. Mm-hmm. So sometimes people will say, well, passive radiator systems have worse transient response because transient response in the base relates to change in phase of the system you know, versus frequency and it's mm-hmm. in a steeper filter like that you have a higher group delay worse transient response but that can be addressed in the way the passive radiator is designed so a lot of people build a passive with a fairly stiff suspension like you would have in a woofer but in fact you want it as soft as possible to push that 
down in frequency as much as possible so okay. you actually don't have the transit response difference. So that's one of the, the negatives that people associate so, with the So, so the, 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 the transient response, quote, problem is really a design problem. It, Mostly, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's really an implementation issue. Implementation problem. Yeah, because people are trying to just take a woofer without the magnet, but really you have to come at it from designing it. you got to know how to design right. it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So when when we're making our new loudspeaker, we've got big radiators on the side, mm -hmm. and you're going to make those out of MDF, out of out of wood. It's a, it's a funny idea, but passives, the the mass of the passive, how it's calculated is what a port of that size would have as its air mass in the tube. So if you make imagine making a really long port, it has to scale in length along with the scaling and area of the port. And so that the mass of the air actually becomes something pretty substantial. So you end up with a mass on a large passive. I mean, we're making passives that are about the size of an 18 inch woofer. Yeah. And that the, the, it's up to like a kilogram of mass. And so actually when you calculate out, okay, what should this diaphragm be made of? Actually MDF makes a lot of sense. Well, wait a minute. When you say a kilogram of mass, you mean the air? It the, adds the, up to the, the air in a in a port that's 18 inches in diameter. Yeah, would actually work if because it would be many many feet long. Uh -huh. uh, you know, if you were scaling up a port that large. Yeah. So its mass is equivalent to a kilogram. Right. Of, that, of air to get it to move, you need enough force to push a kilogram. Well, it's the the, the tuning frequency um, in order to equ equivalent have the equivalent mass of what a port of that size would be is how you set the tuning so that that air mass would be a kilogram so that's why the pr has to be a kilogram right. so that's where the the tuning works out but people wonder why well, is that going to be take all kinds of force in order to um to move it and it does end up being a decent amount of force but as a resonator the system is very efficient down there okay so it uh it all just just works well yeah i mean because when you demonstrated <laughs> that one you know that little bookshelf with the whole yeah. back of it was this uh, oval port yeah. we were blown away at yeah. the at the it was like holy crap you know our one of our favorite mm -hmm. tracks is mm -hmm. the boss skaggs yeah. uh thanks and to it, you and it goes deep yeah. oh yeah. yeah and and very few loudspeakers are able to play that one note when the when the keyboardist is going down, yeah, I mean, yeah. rarely do I hear it. Mm -hmm. And on the IRS, of course, you hear it. Oh, when, for sure. You know, but on this bookshelf speaker, we're hearing that note. And now, is that the real note, or is that? Oh yeah, it's it's definitely playing that low. Yeah. And the the PR does help a lot with that because in order to get a port that will play cleanly down there, it would be uh, a, a very very large. And so the PR yeah. is is part of the way. And also the just making a drive unit that can have a lot of uh, excursion because you, when you're playing deep bass, you, you have to you gotta displace air. You got to move air. Yeah. 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 And so the woofer design for that one is pretty special as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was really cool. Yeah.